Here are the list of knowns that we have. We have the radius of the disc being half of the diameter, so it's 0.1 meters. Mass of the disc, two kilograms. The initial uh, spin rate of the disc is 200 RPMs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna divide it by 60 to get RPS, so that's uh, revolutions per second. And we're gonna multiply it by two pi to get it into radians per second, since two, uh, two pi radians equals to one revolution. So we have uh, 20.944 radians per second as the initial spin of the disc. Uh, we have now the mass of the hoop being one kilogram. The initial spin of the hoop as it's being dropped onto the disc is zero. Uh, the radius of the hoop is same as the radius of the disc of 0.1 meters. We're also gonna assume that it's ultra thin since the problem didn't state anything else. So we're gonna assume that it's an ultra thin disc. If it wasn't ultra thin, they would have said that the outer radius is such and such and the inner radius is such and such. So now that they only said there was one radius, we'll assume that it's razor thin, it's a razor thin circle. Now we wanna know what the uh, final angular velocity is of both the disc and the hoop if they eventually reach the same uh, momentum or sorry, <laughs> reach the same velocity. So obviously there's gonna be a little friction involved. The disc is going to use that friction in order to accelerate the hoop and there might be some heat loss. So obviously if you were to use a conservation of energy equation, it would not work because of that heat loss. Now what we can do is just simplify a little bit by saying that the R disc and the R hoop are the same. We'll just call it R, it's the radius of one or the other. All right, so now that we have everything, let's go ahead and see what we need to use. It looks like since we have kind of like a collision problem and uh, we have masses and it looks like angular velocities, it seems like we're gonna use the conservation of angular momentum. So using the convention that counterclockwise is positive and we'll just assume that the disc is going counterclockwise anyway, let's go ahead and write down L naught, which is the symbol for angular momentum is equal to LF. Breaking it down into its components, we have I of the disc, it's a two part system. So I of the disc multiplied by the angular momentum of the disc initially, plus I of the hoop times the angular momentum of the hoop initially is gonna equal to I of the disc plus the I of the hoop. Quantity multiplied by the final angular momentum of both. Since they're gonna collide and in a way um, stick together inelastically, I guess, then we're gonna to have to combine the um, moment of inertia of both of the items. And they're both gonna spin the same way at the end. So looking up online, we can see that for a flat solid uniform disc, the equation for, um, for the moment of inertia is one half m disc times r disc squared, which we'll just call r. And for a ultra thin hoop with no inner or outer radius, just one universal radii, uh, we're gonna say that's equal to m hoop times r squared. So now plugging that in, it's gonna get a little longer. We have one half m disc r squared omega disc naught plus, and we're gonna go ahead and just, be, so I don't have to write this down, we're gonna say that since omega hoop is zero, that this whole term is just gonna be zero anyway. So plus zero is equal to one half m disc r squared plus m hoop r squared times omega f. And this is what we're trying to find. Let's see if, well, let's go ahead and make sure that all of these are given to us. So we have m disc right over here. We got r, we have omega disc naught. We have m disc again, we have r, r. We also have m hoop. So voila, we actually have the capacity to now solve for omega f. 
So isolating omega f, we get one half m disk r squared omega disk naught divided by one half m disk r squared plus m hoop r squared. Now let's write down all the knowns. m disk is 2.0 kilograms. r is 0 0.10 meters. Omega naught of the disk is 20.944 radians per second. Again, M disk is 2.0 kilograms. R is 0 0.10 meters. M hoop is 1.0 kilograms. And R again is 0 0.1 meter. Plug in this all into your calculator. And with whatever space we have left, we are gonna get 10.472 radians per second which if you go ahead and then multiply by 60 and divide by two pi, you can get revolutions per minute. And that actually comes out to be a very nice looking 100. Now what you can do, and if you wanna take a shortcut, it's totally fine. Instead of getting all of these omegas in terms of, well, I guess the only omega we have here is that of the disk, in terms of radians per second, you can keep it as RPM and you would eventually get straight to this answer instead of going through this. So that's totally fine as long as you keep track of all the units and make sure that they work out at the end. You'll eventually get RPMs and you, would, you could skip all the conversion steps. So this is the final angular velocity of both the disk and the hoop.